for uh, having me. I think most of you know me. My name is Amal. And uh, uh, today I'm a postdoc at the uh, Argon National Laboratory and I'm going to talk uh, uh, about a part of my work at Argon. So my talk is entitled Multimodal Performance Characterization of Distributed Task-Based Workflows on HPC Platforms, uh, but I'm going to focus especially on DASK workflows. So this work has been done as a part of a recap project that is um, scalable metadata and provenance services for reproducibility for hybrid workflows. Uh, the words in red are probably the most important in this project. So we uh, were trying to um, uh, to uh, to get metadata uh, that give more insights into the provenance and the performance of uh, workflows. We want to have scalable uh, solutions because uh, we are working on high performance workflows. So uh, probably those workflows will generate a lot amount of data. So uh, we want this solution to be scalable. But not only that, uh, because when we talk about reproducible workflows, we are mostly talking about having multiple runs of a single um, uh, simulation or workflow. So we may have to run those workflows in parallel. So we're going to have a lot of uh, data generated by these workflows. To have uh, an idea about like the uh, the goal of this project, we have this uh, this image. So there are mainly three parts. So the um, data sources is uh, so mainly the, the, the main goal of this project is to be able to extract uh, data and metadata from multiple sources. That's why we have the multimodal in the title. So uh, we have uh, the workflow management system that uh, at the beginning it was only radical uh, pilots, but when I joined the project, uh, we want to have more use cases. So we're using that. That's why I'm, I'm going to talk in, uh, I will talk about that. We want to have metadata. Um, like lower level metadata uh, regarding the IOs, so we could use Darshan or any other one. Uh, we want to have also task performance. So um, at the beginning, they used Chimbuko to have that, but in Dask it was more specific, so we have our way to collect this performance data from Dask. And uh, also, uh, but this part, uh, I'm not going to talk about it in, uh, in this talk, which is application guidance uh, and user annotation. So we do not do that for now, but uh, it's also part of the project. So when we extract uh, all this data, usually we have um, multiple formats. So it's not that easy to aggregate all of them and fuse them uh, into a single report or uh, to be able to query uh, data from the different sources. So at some point, we wanted to uh, be able to um, to gather all this data and aggregate them into a single source using Mochi. Um, so this data can be then uh, you um, saved into repositories so that we can do post uh, of processing and uh, analyze several uh, runs as well. Uh, and we want them to be available, of course, for the users to do either the performance or uh, the results or producibility because we are interested in both. But in my talk, we're going to just talk, uh, we are interested only in uh, performance or producibility. So uh, let's start the talk. So um, I was talking about workflows, uh, but uh, a workflow um, can be also um, so a workflow uh, in uh, traditional traditionally workflow can be seen as a simulation, uh, which is running some uh, some physics, and then we extract this data to be analyzed or so on. But it can be also uh, seen as a task-based application because we're going to have uh, multiple uh, tasks uh, feeding uh, each other and uh, sending data from each other. So that's why actually we are um, interested in task-based models. Uh, and in this work, we consider DASK, which is a task-based uh, framework, as a workflow uh, management uh, system because it, you, it manages actually those tasks that we can consider as components of uh, a workflow. So why we are interested in distributed uh, task-based task models? Actually, there are multiple uh, reasons. The most uh, important are uh, cited in this slide. The first one is, uh, of course, the high productivity of these models and their ease of use. 
So they are um, they provide a higher level abstractions, which make them really easy to use. Uh, and of course, if they pro provide these high level abstractions, they also uh, hide uh, the low level uh, complexity of managing concurrency or threads, processes, or whatever. The second reason is uh, the fact that they uh, optimize the resource allocations dynamically because the scheduler is uh, somehow uh, has a good idea about which resources are um, are idle, so it can uh, actually schedule the tasks uh, into different ta uh, into different resources if necessary, and it load balance, of course, uh, this. And finally, uh, something which is really interesting, which is the native scalability and elasticity of these models, uh, because we can add and remove resources when necessary. And for example, for Dask, it can uh, you can even just like uh, use this option, and it will uh, scale up and down uh, one it thinks that uh, it is necessary. Uh, so maybe most of us are fam more familiar with MPI. So uh, he here is a very uh, simple comparison between MPI and task-based model to just have an idea to be able to compare maybe uh, between the two. So um, here in the top line, we have um, the characteristics of MPI. And in the bottom, we have characteristics of distributed task-based models. Uh, and specifically for Dask here. So um, uh, there is a fundamental, there's a lot of fundamental differences between the two models, but mainly we can, uh, we can be interested into the three main things, the data, the communications, and the scheduling. So for MPI, data can be seen as um, a value of a given uh, buffer at a given moment, which as you can see, by definition, is uh, mutable data because it changes uh, every single time step or every single uh, time we change the data. And it is, of course, local to each process. In task-based models, data is not necessarily uh, that. It is considered as an input or an output of a given task um, in, the, uh, in the application. It is usually immutable and can live at the same time in different uh, locations, so it's not local to every single process. The communications in MPI uh, should be written explicitly, so we have a knowledge about uh, the communications that will be done at some point in uh, our application, which make them actually more easy uh, to, uh, to analyze in terms of uh, performance and reproducibility, because we have this knowledge about what will happen uh, in our uh, application. Um, in uh, task-based models, we don't have this, uh, this information because, as I have said, the task will be scheduled dynamically in the resources, so probably there will be communications uh, in a RAND, but in another RAND, there will be other type of communications between two different workers and not necessarily the same nodes. Uh, for the scheduling, in MPI, since we know which process, uh, like which code a process will be exec uh, executing, then we know already explicitly and the user writes uh, its code ex explicitly in uh, Dask, the scheduling is implicit and the runtime scheduler actually does all of that so as you can see the task based programming simplifies writing distributed non trivial algorithms but it makes it complicated to understand the performance and uh, its variability or uh, the reproducibility within a uh, work so since we are interested in Dask, uh, there is an overview of how uh, it works. A task in Dask can be seen as a function. Um, a task graph is um, a DAG where the nodes are tasks and the, uh, the edges are dependencies between the tasks. In Dask, we have three main actors that we can see here in the figure. So we have a client, which is usually a Python code. This client creates and submits a task graph to a scheduler. The scheduler, as its names uh, mentioned, it uh, dispatches the uh, tasks into the different workers, mm -hmm. and the workers will uh, do the real work, so they will run this, um, these tasks. Uh, to be able to create this task graph, actually, there are a lot of uh, ways in Dask, either low-level libraries by adding decorators to your functions or using futures, or using very uh, interesting high-level distributed um, APIs, uh, they, that are actually um, very interesting for people that used to write their codes using NumPy, uh, Pandas, or Scikit-Learn. And here is a concrete example of how easy it is to port your code from sequential Python to Dask distributed. 
So this is an example of um, a code that reads uh, a, an HDFI file, uh, the data data set. It computes the sum and then applies this function, which is called bank, um, and gets the result. So to, to do that in Dask, actually, we have to, uh, to create a client and connect it to a scheduler. So this is supposed to be uh, the IP address of a scheduler. We're going to do the same thing, but instead of uh, having an MP array, we're going to create a Dask array. Uh, so this will just create a lazy version of the array, which will not read the data at this level. We're going to call some just the, sim the similar, uh, the same function as in the sequential version. And to be able to apply this uh, function um, lazily, we're going to decorate it with Dask delay and apply it here. And finally, to, to launch the computation, we have to call compute uh, client.compute uh, <coughs> in uh, this R to be able to compute the result. And the equivalent task of graph, actually, that task creates is this. There will be a task that will be reading the data from the file, computing a local sum, and then aggregating the sum until we find this little s, then it applies the function. So in terms of differences, it's really little if you have already your code written in uh, using uh, NumPy or it will be the same thing for Pandas or Secular. Uh, so now uh, let's come back to our problem which is performance and understandability in uh, Dask and here I have two main uh, motivation examples from my PhD. Julia is happy or maybe not. <laughs> uh, so this is this figures actually represent um, a comparison between data, which is uh, Dask Institute uh, analytics versus post hoc uh, weak scaling uh, for some codes. So actually, you can ignore everything and focus only on the red bars here. So the red bar here corresponds to a post hoc, right? So we write the data generated by the little green thing, which is the simulation. So um, it takes almost 10, uh, 10 seconds to write the uh, data. And um, so this is the simulation side, and this is the analytics side. And in the analytics side, we are comparing uh, with, uh, with the in-situ analytics where mainly we are just waiting for the data and processing it. So there is no IOPS. In the red bar, we are reading the data and doing the analytics. Um, in the purple bar, we are waiting just for the data and doing the analytics. Just notice the difference between the two. Actually, this red bar is uh, larger than the analytics, and we can ignore the, uh, the waiting for the data, the analytics, plus this 10 seconds of writing or reading the data if we consider them, uh, uh, if we consider them um, equivalent. So um, what happened all this time uh, in that? So we can't really understand because we don't have a lot of data to see uh, what happened in this uh, red bar. We know that we did analytics, we know that we read data, but why it was that not efficient, inefficient. Another example is um, the rent-to-rent -rent performance variability. So here actually we have um, communication time from some processes to workers. We can see that, uh, so this uh, rent one, rent two, and rent three. So First of all, the uh, global view is different. It is similar here. So we can imagine that maybe uh, we are using the same resources in this uh, in these two runs. That's why we see a similar uh, um, similar allure of our um, uh, communications. Um, and it was actually the case. We have checked with uh, the support, and we found out that uh, here we use exactly the same nodes. That's why we we have somehow the same uh, performances here. But here, th that was a, a different set of nodes. So why we have like, um, for the processes from zero to 40, whatever, we have like only one second, uh, or we, we were able to communicate one gigabytes in only one second. And for the rest of processes, we had more time, simply because those processes were connected to the same switch as the workers, so uh, as the, com the, the, the other peer, that's why it was uh, much faster. And the others were actually connected to another switch. So they are going to go like upper in the, uh, in the tree before going down to, to another node. So this is also a factor that may, um, may uh, uh, alter our performance reproducibility because there is a lot of variability in these communications. And we don't have enough knowledge to say that, hey, there was this communication at this time and this other communication at that other time. 
um, in, uh, in our work. So, uh, something else. So even if we have um, an interesting performance report in that, it's still very high level and it doesn't give us uh, a lot of information about the uh, details of how uh, the workflow works. So this is an example of the performance report in Dask. It shows us um, the, uh, let's say, the distribution of the tasks in our workflow. So here we have time. Uh, in Y we have the thread. The small points or bars are tasks. The length is the duration. So for example, we see that the red color here, um, the red and uh, uh, blue or green, don't see, uh, are taking longer than the others. But it doesn't tell us what those tasks are doing. Just say, uh, hey, this task is uh, from like a certain category, which is here, get item and other computation. And get item usually corresponds to um, uh, reading data from, uh, from disk. So even with this view, we do not really have uh, more data about the uh, the IO behavior or the communication, so it's not easy to um, to uh, to analyze the reproducibility or the variability of performance in of a given workflow. So it's more complicated because this data is only available in an HTML format. So if you have to um, to to compare multiple runs, uh, you're gonna have to like open them all, and we do not all have a wall image uh, in our <laughs> So it's not easy. So we not we need actually another format to be able to to do this rent to rent analysis. So uh, to be able to uh, to work into performance or producibility, we have first to understand the performance. So uh, we we j just looking into the workflow as a whole application is not enough to understand its performance and its performance reproducibility. So it, we should go into a finer granularity in, um, in our workflow to be able to understand that. So um, the finer granularities that we can consider are tasks, IOs, and communications. For tasks, how we can get performance per task, per task group, per task prefix, when does work stealing happens, why it happens, uh, at what time it happens, uh, what are the most variable tasks. If we have this information, we're going to uh, be able actually probably just to focus on those tasks and make them more performant or less variable. For IOs, um, so we don't have uh, actually a deep um, understanding of IOs. Does every single high level operation translate to only a single IO or multiple? So this information is also important. And um, for example, for the first uh, variability example, actually, uh, the one of the reasons we had that long time is simply because the chunking of uh, our data uh, that we used to write it was not compatible with the way that creates the data. That's why it takes longer. And the communications, is, it's also Im important to know that. So maybe um, it's not that trivial to uh, tell us how to communicate this data or when to communicate it, but at least we can think about uh, a system with the feedback to tell us uh, when to try to to reduce these communications if they are uh, causing a lot of issues. And um, we, we need to understand the variability of each element to be able to understand the variability of the whole uh, workflow and work into um, the reproducibility. So um, there was all the questions, but we don't have this data. So of course, we need to collect this um, data to be able to analyze how they, uh, they are. Um, this data, all, um, so I, I mentioned actually provenance at the beginning, but it refers to, meta, to uh, all the metadata describing the origin, the history of uh, given data. But in our case, we, we are interested actually in a given task we are, because we are in task-based model. So, um, if we uh, take back this um, data that we want to collect, so this is a way to be able to collect it. So for the for the desk level data, we can think of um, some plugin systems that will be able to capture this data when the, um, the these events arrive in the scheduler or the worker, and uh, we can have two solutions: either a service to write this data to disk or stream them to uh, another process. So, of course, 
I uh, I will avoid writing down to disk. So we're gonna go for streaming. For um, the low level IO system, since we are uh, running these workflows in an HPC system, we can just try to borrow one of these profilers that already exist in HPC community. And in our case, uh, case we uh, we use Darshan. So for the IOs, it's not just about um, IOs per workflow. Or so I was saying that we we maybe uh, we're gonna need to go further into uh, IOs per thread uh, in the workflow. Uh, finally, this uh, last line here uh, about the job level. This is also important because uh, if we don't have uh, the information about the uh, configurations that we have the allocations that we are receiving, all the logs that we are uh, getting from all this, um, from running this workflow, probably we are missing a lot of opportunities to understand the performance and its variability or uh, reproducibility. So uh, for this, like logs and stuff like that, we're gonna opt for just parsing them into, uh, with a way that we can uh, have them easily. And finally, we want to have all this data accessible and easily searchable. So uh, now I'm going to talk about the uh, the way we have uh, implemented that in Dask. So first of all, we have modelized all what I, I was saying in this layered computational stack. That um, and it, and so you can, the way you can see that is that all those are layers, and we need actually to have metadata from the all from these layers to be able to uh, understand the performance. So the hardware infrastructure, so we're gonna just uh, have the data about um, uh, our supercomputer, the network, and so on. The system software and configurations, we want to know which versions of the software we are using and all the configurations we are uh, using, either the default or the, uh, the customized ones. And in the middle here, we're gonna have a lot of things running all together. So the workflow management system level, in our case, it's desk. We're going to have these composable services uh, that I was mentioning for uh, capturing and collecting the data, but also the, pro the profilers to collect lower level data. And, and, and at the very top, we, we're going to keep the application, of course, for the last part of the project that we do not work on right now, but still it is there. And of course, uh, this. Um, so a part of the project, which is at the very end, was the user interface. So we want to be to to let the user um, uh, be able to uh, use this data that we are collecting very easily and uh, in a visual way. Uh, yeah. So th that was about the co the uh, collection of the data. So it was not only about that, but also uh, about the correlation of um, the data that we are collecting at multiple levels. So we want to be able to say, hey, this task in the task level is uh, performing like that. But this is because we have this IOs done and we can get that from that. So we want to be able to correlate data from multiple sources. Uh, this is the uh, metadata chart for uh, Dask. So those are the two first layers. So in the hardware infrastructures, we get the node characteristics, the power file system characteristics, but also the network topology and characteristics. At the uh, system software and job configuration, we uh, want to be able to keep the environment that we are using, the software environment, the job script, the way we are um, submitting our, uh, our workflow, but also the logs, as I already mentioned, and also the Dask config, because in Dask there are a lot of configurations and if you change them in your code or in the yaml file which is the default way to to have them it can change actually the uh, performance an example is that uh, for example a worker if it is using a certain percentage of its memory that will automatically start writing this data to disk even if you didn't ask for these uh these ios so it can also alter the um the performance uh, if we take back this chart, so we have uh, here maybe the, the, the four uh, main points of our design choices. So um, in here at the uh, scheduler and worker level, we're gonna have we're gonna have a lot of provenance data. So we want to opt for streaming again. Uh, I don't want to write files because just writing to the parallel file system will maybe delay more and cause more variability in our workflow. So streaming 
uh, could be better. So we want uh, a composability, ideally um, an elastic solution. So we're not going to hard code that. Uh, ideally, we're going to use uh, plugins at the scheduler level and then another at the worker level to uh, extract the metadata needed. And finally, we want to decouple um, uh, like all the uh, sources to avoid unnecessary communications and synchronization. We could like exchange uh, data between the Darth level and Darshan level, but uh, we choose to decouple them. Uh, each uh, just collect the data by itself, and then at the end we're gonna collaborate collaborate them currently, <laughs> uh, and uh, to be able to uh, to have like the uh, corresponding IOs for each task and uh, others. And the last one is we want an HPC oriented solution. So we, uh, we try to use the, uh, the tools that we already have in the community, in the HPC community. Uh, so now I'm gonna show the, uh, the overview of our integration of ta task distributed Darshan for the IOs and Mochi uh, for the streaming part. So uh, here you can find the go, uh, again the uh, scheduler of desk, the workers. To be able to extract the data, we have added uh, plugins at the worker level and at the scheduler level. Concretely, those uh, plugins will intercept the uh, calls that interest us in uh, the worker and in the scheduler, extract this data, and send this data or stream this data to Mofcow, which is the streaming uh, service of Mochi, and I'm going to detail that later. And then um, a Mofcow consumer will try to get, will try, no, it will, uh, get the data from the database and process it in uh, into visual data or uh, whatever data. And here, since the worker uh, does the whole work, uh, including reading the files from the file by system, so every worker is instrumented with Darshan. So we're going to have one uh, log per uh, worker. And uh, we have added threads again here. And I'm going to talk about this uh, in a bit. Uh, yeah. So um, I mentioned Mochi. I'm going to take a moment to talk about this project. So it started in 2015, and it got the R&D uh, 100 in uh, 2021. So it is a set of methodologies and components for rapid development of HPC data uh, services. We have already a lot of um, components already available. So for people that want to use them, just go ahead and grab what you need rather than just uh, redeveloping them. Uh, and it is already used in uh, multiple um, institutions and projects. Mofka, which is the service that we used here, is the Mochi streaming service. Uh, it can be seen as the, uh, the Kafka of HPC. Uh, so in Mofka, we have uh, events, we have topics, we have uh, producer and consumers. So the producers mainly uh, push events uh, into the consumers. Uh, and these events are, uh, are, um, are put into uh, topics. Uh, and the producer and consumer can only say subscribe to topics that are interested in to push or pull the services. So the way this works is that we're going to have like some events. This validator can be seen as a filtering if we are interested in some events rather than everything we can just filter in the validator. Then the partition selector. Uh, so uh, in Mofka, we have a lot of partitions like uh, within a lot of servers. So there are going to be a, select a selection of the partition that we want to put the events in, then it will be serialized. Uh, it will be put into batches and then push into um, the uh, uh, consumer, uh, the server. No. So uh, here I'm getting back the um, the integration figure and um, for Mofka. So it was uh, mainly in this uh, plugin system. So every plugin will instantiate a Mofka producer and will subscribe to uh, the topic, uh, either scheduler or worker. And it will uh, send the uh, information about tasks, like uh, keys, prefixes, sizes, groups, the task transitions, which means 
um, the task state transition. So every task will transit through different states in um, the uh, in the scheduler and in the worker. So we get all this data to have the whole provenance of a task. And also from the uh, worker uh, data, but also uh, the location of the task in the worker, either just the IP address of the worker or the threads as well. So here we have an example of, um, of the events in Mofka. So there is, um, in each event, two uh, pieces of data. There is a metadata, which is mainly a very small piece of data to just say, hey, this is um, action, and the value can be either uh, task graph creation or task transition, disconnections as well uh, for, for the worker as well as the client. And the data, it's the actual data about uh, the performance itself. So for example, we're going to have the key of this data. So it started in, <coughs> sorry, in processing, and uh, now it is in memory. This is, well, it was in worker whatever, and this is, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> it was in this thread, and um, the output size is here. We have also the time step and the duration of the set. <coughs> So the Mofka consumers actually uh, get the uh, data uh, from these uh, servers. And uh, for now, we just store them into or put them into data frames and then store them into CSVs. But at some point, we, uh, also, uh, we are also interested in uh, working on institute data, data analysis. <clears throat> the second part of the, uh, of the integration is Darshan. Darshan is the scalable HPT IO characterization tool. It is <coughs> I'm sorry. You need hot water. Hot water. What? No. Here we go. <coughs> so um, it is mainly used in simulations. Uh, the way it works is that um, in a given simulation, we're going to have <coughs> a lot of MPI processes. For each MPI process, we're going to have the Darshan report of all the IOs done. And we can have such reports of when we have a lot of uh, like this heat map uh, to have an idea about the IOs in our <coughs> in our application. Uh, maybe uh, and there is actually a Darshan extended extended traces that gives more uh, metadata about all the IOs, like the moment where they happened, the thread that did well, the thread we added it at, uh, later, but a lot of information about the data and the sizes uh, of uh, all the IOs that has, have been done. So here, in a typical HPC job, we're going to have this first uh, scenario. We're going to have one log per process. <clears throat> but this does not necessarily work for uh, task-based uh, applications, because if we have only a single node, and in a process which is a worker in our case, we're going to have a lot of um, tasks that run then we cannot say that this task uh, had this IO because we are going to have a lot of tasks running and this um, we're going to have a one to uh, n, uh, well, it's not one to n. So here it's a one to n IOs, one process to n IOs. Here the one to n does not work because uh, each process will run multiple uh, tasks. So we, we're going to have an m to n uh, correlation, which is not easy to, uh, to find. So to be able to um, do this correlation, we have added <coughs> the thread ID. <coughs> and since we know already uh, uh, which task was running in which thread at a given moment, so we have the timestamp and the thread, we are able to correlate the uh, tasks running with the records, the IO records in the Darshan file. Um, yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> so uh, the data, uh, here again, uh, the, the whole architecture. So um, the data that we collected at multiple levels are aggregated uh, in post hoc for the moment again. Uh, but uh, they are aggregated not only for a single run, but for multiple runs. So we can query uh, per, task uh, per task group, per uh, timestamp, uh, per uh, 
uh, IOs per file for whatever. So it's really easy to have more uh, reports about the performance in general for single or multiple uh, workloads. So note that the architecture that we have here, coupling uh, Dask with uh, Mocha or Mochi services, is actually very generic and can be used for uh, multiple use cases. <clears throat> for example, the task resilience <coughs> part, where we can use Yokan uh, databases or Mocha to save. Um, or Mofka to stage data rather than saving it uh, to disk. We can use um, Dask and Mofka in elastic use cases, which is really interesting and not really uh, used in um, or done in, um, in the community. So both of them are elastic. Uh, we can have them exchanging nodes when necessarily to scale up and down uh, one of them if needed. And finally, for resource uh, reproducibility, not performance reproducibility, where we can extract and compare intermediate task results uh, rather than just comparing the last uh, results. Uh, so now I'm going to show some uh, I'm going to show some studies for uh, performance uh, analysis that we have thanks to this integration. So uh, we have used for that three main workflows. We have the image processing workflow, which is mainly a pipeline image processing pipeline. The ResNet uh, prediction uh, pipeline and the XGBoot training uh, pipeline. These are the characteristics uh, of these. So maybe the most interesting thing to check or to look at are the number of IOs and the number of transfers. So um, I was expecting to have <coughs> a different number of communications because we don't have a priori knowledge of the communication and it's dynamic, so it's fine to have different numbers. But for the IOs, I was quite surprised. And the reason mainly is um, the fact that we are submitting for image processing and XGBoost multiple task graphs. So if the data was still in memory at uh, the moment where we want to process it, then we're not going to do an IO. But if it's not in memory, then we're going to have more IOs. For the second uh, use case, we have different ones, but in this case, the, the Darshan report was not complete and I didn't rerun the analytics, so just ignore it. Uh, in the image there, uh, that's again to say that it's not enough to have a global a overview of the performance of the workflow. So we are here, we have the input uh, performance, the communication performance, the computation, and the whole uh, workflow. So here, we see that the red bar, the total bar, is very huge compared to the three ones. And this is just because the workflow itself is very small. And this includes the communication, uh, the connection time, and the setup time of Dask itself. So just ignore the fact that they are huge. For the XGBoost one, it's a longer one. So we can see that even, uh, so the computation, communication, and input, they are not uh, exclusive. So if you sum them, you're going to find more. Uh, it will be like larger than the red uh, bar in the normal. So uh, something that we can have uh, now is uh, the correlation between the task durations and other events in task. Uh, in the first image here, we have a, co a parallel coordinate of uh, task uh, durations. So the first one is the elapsed time. The second one is the prefix, or you can consider it as the type of tasks. The third one is the thread ID where the tasks executed. Then this is the size, and finally the duration. So we can see actually, uh, so when we have the red uh, lines here, it means that it takes longer time to run. So we can see that all those red lines uh, come, well, it, they happen at the first uh, 500 seconds. They are all uh, of this category, which is uh, read, packet, uh, fused, assign, which is mainly doing IOs, a lot of them. And uh, something also interesting, and we can uh, we already knew, it is the fact that these tasks are very large. The size of these tasks are very large compared to the recommended size of tasks in Dask. So they are uh, taking very long time, and they will, and they have actually uh, uh, caused this event loop unresponsive in Dasks, and we got that actually from uh, the log. So we parsed that into this. And we found this, of course, color correlation of the uh, events there and the first uh, 500 seconds of this workflow. 
So we have a lot of them because the tasks are very long and the workers are not precise. Something else uh, that is interesting that we can see here is the uh, IO distribution of uh, our workflow and uh, how each uh, or every um, high level IO operation maps to uh, the low level operations. So this is from the image processing example. The images were like 80 megabytes or something. And the IOs, the read IOs, uh, well, the, the, um, the red is read, the blue are uh, writes. So uh, we have found out that uh, there was a lot of very, very small IOs of four uh, kilobytes. Uh, and we can have like 25 reads per one high level read. So uh, read, I mean, IO operations, low level IO operations. So this is not good. Uh, we, we can work. Uh, so if we want more reproducible workflows, we can, for example, just try to do a single IO per uh, file, which is not that large. Uh, um, yeah, so that's it for this. Um, so the synchronization that we see here, like in MPI, it's just because we, uh, we have three uh, task graphs. So uh, there is a small gap between uh, the, the end of the last one and the beginning of the, the, the next one. And this one is um, the I distribution of the ResNet batch predictions. The files have almost the same size, and we see uh, like a more uniform or unified IO distribution, which is very uh, different from the other workflow. So such, such for example, uh, views, we were not able to see them in Dask before uh, without this, um, this uh, collection of data we did. Another um, example is, uh, for example, this uh, blue uh, here is writing the uh, data uh, to disk. So we have confirmed that every single write in the high level translates into a single write in the low level, one single IO operation, but it takes very long time. And we can see that actually uh, similarly to the last one. So uh, in the first uh, 20 seconds here, we are here in 50 seconds, so uh, here. Uh, we uh, have a lot of uh, red lines going through a uh, save file, which is just writing the data to, to disk, and uh, they are taking a very long time, even if they are not that uh, big. Yeah, they are like around uh, 80 uh, megabytes. And uh, this is uh, maybe not that interesting, but uh, this is also uh, uh, another view that we have now. So uh, I have said that the rent-to-rent uh, -rent communication distribution is very different. Here, we cannot really know because there is a lot of uh, communications, uh, but uh, we, can, we can see, for example, the communications within the node and across nodes, and we can uh, detect these outliers, for example, within the, the node. It's not supposed to be that long, but we can see that uh, through uh, this, uh, this views. And finally, uh, maybe this is, the most interesting figure for the project itself, because um, it is the multi-source task provenance for um, each task key, which is this long thing. It was a real example. So for this uh, key, we know that this key actually was uh, submitted within task graph two, and there are uh, 74 tasks. Um, we can have the set of dependence. I didn't put it here because it's very long and uh, it's not aesthetic. We can have actually the whole trace story of all the task uh, state transitions and the moment where they arrived in the scheduler or in the worker. And we're going to have the list of all, all the locations and the moment where they arrived in all the workers so we can track the data and its movement in the workflow. And finally, we have a very precise um, uh, output of which files uh, have been read or write by this task. Uh, uh, the size of the uh, data, the thread that did it, and uh, all of this data. So um, in terms of uh, data collection and analysis for this project, it was probably the, uh, the most interesting uh, figure to show. Uh, now I, uh, I will be concluding. <laughs> uh, so in this talk, we have, um, we have presented um, our work on uh, the RECAP project, which is interested in re performance reproducibility for, for task-based uh, workflows. We were interested in Dask because, uh, well, I had some experience in Dask. 
Um, so uh, we have collected uh, data uh, using uh, Darshan and uh, Dask, but we still uh, want to collect more data, for example, for network uh, metrics that we didn't have uh, for now, but it's also interesting to, to know uh, like um, uh, how, how the communications happen, the handshake, the real transfer, and so on. We, didn't, we designed this generic framework to collect performance data that is not only applicable for distributed task workflows, but also for other workflows. We have implemented it using Dask Movka and Darshan, and we showed example of uh, performance and provenance for, uh, for these studies. So for uh, future work, there are actually a few, few of them. So we want to get like this low level, uh, more low level uh, data, the, the ones that Dask wants uh, to hide, the CPU memory threads usage, the global interpret log overhead, the communications inside. We want to be able to um, collect the, da the data from Darshan Institute because right now we have the outputs at the very end of the workflow that we want to include them in Mocha. We want to design this reactive trigger system that we send feedbacks to the uh, workflow management system. Um, a use case can be actually just uh, delaying some IOs if we see that there is a lot of variability. Uh, we want to have, and we have started uh, on that, to have more heterogeneous use cases that use GPUs because uh, for now it was just like CPUs. We want to work on, um, so right now we are working on uh, distributing a graph neural network training using Dask. So it gives us a very interesting insight of how Dask uh, manages or uses GPUs, even if it doesn't really use them at low level. And finally, we are interested in uh, other use cases, probably Julien, <laughs> probably processing Gisela uh, data or other uh, use cases uh, within this workflow. Um, and I want to uh, finish probably with this um, slide for other projects that are um, happening in my team in Argonne. So uh, as I mentioned, there is already Mochi, which is customized data services for DOE science. So if you are looking for composability, elasticity, or smart devices, we can contact, you can contact us. So there is Darshan that, that, is develop, that has been developed and still maintained by the team uh, for lightweight IO characterization for your codes. If you have issues, <laughs> we have Romeo, but not Juliet, uh, an implementation of the IO part of MPI standards included in MPI and other um, implementations. Uh, parallel NetCDF uh, plus Romeo, which make it more performant. And there is DataLib, which is an HDF5 plugin, if I, yes, a plugin, um, which accelerates the IOs. So maybe I'm not part of all these projects probably cannot provide a lot of information about them, but if you find a need there, please uh, contact us. And that was it for me. Thank you for your attention. I realize I forgot, I failed to introduce you, so many of you know Zamal probably. If not, Amal did her PhD there some time ago with uh, Julien under the hard time of uh, COVID. <laughs> But uh, we still manage, and now she's at the Harvard National Lab, as you know. So, yeah. any question, Marcel? Uh, will you use, uh, or try to, uh, the direct RDMA uh, connection to uh, to share the data between uh, nodes? Yes, uh, nodes in uh, in desk. Servers. In, in desk. In, in your tool, yeah. Yeah. So, so actually. Um, uh, Mochi uses uh, RDMA to send okay. the data. So the streaming part where I uh, send the data from Dask to Mofka, yes, there is RDMA there. So Mochi part, yes. And you have seen that the, the efficiency is there? Uh, so in so for now, actually, and it's another uh, thing, we didn't really evaluate the performance of streaming the data. So it was okay. just collection of the data for now. But... Uh, Maybe I can ask Mathieu about that. Okay. And do, do you, will, will you do, you, you said you will do some fit, but uh, will you do some, uh, like Melissa, uh, ensemble of simulation with your tool? So, um, well, 
probably yes, but uh, no, <laughs> it doesn't really make sense. So uh, it makes sense to have like multiple runs running and uh, extract the data and analyze in situ uh, the performance and behavior of that. But uh, when you talk about ensemble runs, you are uh, changing. Um, so we cannot talk about reproducibility there because you are changing your input mm -hmm. in uh, ensemble runs, if I understand the parameters. Yeah. But uh, when we, the, um, the performance or producibility thing, we are trying to keep uh, the thing the most stable or we don't want to change the code or the configurations or anything. We are using the same configuration and we are already having variability. So we don't look for more variability or turbulence. Yes, you see. Uh, it seems that in the, you are developing their profiling tool for the task level prioritization and there you said and you would like to improve the reproducibility but the reproducibility seems another story yes so uh, so actually for now we 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 are not working on improving our producibility at all uh, this part is only collecting the data to understand the performance and if we understand it we can work into the reproducibility of certain components at least the code part of it because in that, it will be really difficult to force that, like to schedule the tasks in uh, the same nodes. And it's more difficult because you're not ha gonna have the same allocations every single uh, job submission. So um, yeah, it's already there for MPI. Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, that was kind of my question also. I mean, when you do MPI, mm -hmm. you know which process or which rank We'll do an I.O. at what time, so when you evaluate that with Darshan, you, you get a trace and you can act on it with task. It all depends a lot on the, the scheduling. Maybe you have many I.O. tasks that are scheduled at the same time, and this is extremely bad. Mm -hmm. But maybe in the, same, in the next run of the exact same uh, workload, uh, then the task you each uh, after one another, and uh, the result is pretty good. Uh, so I was wondering how much insight you, you get from these traces. Have you actually managed to use them? Do you uh, like run the code many times to get some, uh, uh, yeah, how reproducible and how much insight do you get? So, um, for example, for the uh, the longest, which is the XGBoost one, it was uh, we were having like uh, a difference of 500 seconds from a run to another. And uh, there was that was mainly due to uh, the uh, long communications, but also the length of the long running tasks that they showed in the parallel co coordinate. So of course we, we we have a lot of IOs there, and uh, this causes the variability. So the good thing is that we can actually check for each uh, task which IOs uh, does it uh, do and see the variabilities. For example, if we are reading the same file and the same size of data, then why this is uh, variable. So we can see that actually. Okay. Very nice. Some other question? <coughs> if you're in line, if you have a question. Okay, so thank you.